There was a battle of former England teammates early on, and Broad, steaming in with the new ball, got the better of his former skipper, Cook, out caught behind. A few overs later, Fletcher dealt with Wesley, and in spectacular fashion, off stump taken out of the ground. Brown and Lawrence ticked the score past 50 and kept going. They were threatening to establish an important partnership. Lyndon James made sure they wouldn't be able to do so, Lawrence out LBW for 14, and Knotts having the better of the morning session. Broad then dealt with Walter, out LBW for a duck to keep up the momentum. Essex then made it to the Sanctuary of Lunch without further damage done, the score at the break, 71 for 4. They'd had just 6 before Fletcher had another, Tender Scarter out LBW for 6, the afternoon was taking on a similar look to the morning. And another for Fletcher, Wheata strangled down the leg side, and Essex's innings coming apart at the seams. Mick Brown was the only Essex man able to really find his feet, and his resistance came with a 50, a quick single getting him there off 103 balls. With the score one run from triple figures, Fletcher had Brown out, his full delivery well caught at backward point. Then a fifth for Fletcher all of two balls later, Snater caught behind for a duck and the big man had a fiver to his name and he didn't look like stopping there. Siddle lasted just one ball, out LBW, three wickets now on the over and Fletcher on a hat-trick. Lyndon James wrapped it up in the next over, Porter LBW for a first ball duck and Essex all out for 99. Little then for Essex to cling on to Bar Brown's top of the order half century. Luke Fletcher had run through them, finishing with new career best figures of 6 for 24. The Knotts opening partnership has been a consistent one in recent times, Hamid's twin tons a few weeks ago fresh in the memory, but he'd have to go on without Slater this time, the opener out to Snater. And Duckett didn't fare much better, Porter pitched it up and he could only guide a catch to Wheater behind the stumps. Clark and Hamid saw them to 50. The interval coming soon after, the score at the break, 55 for 2. They carried on after the break, looking to eclipse their visitors' total as quickly as possible. But Knotts would need to do so without Clark. He was caught behind off the bowling of Snater for 15. Hamid, though, was still there, and he'd been proving difficult to dislodge, but this time he'd be unable to play his way to a milestone knock. He was out to Snater, another for the Essex upstart, and one run shy of a half century. James and Mullaney, though, brought a stop to the Essex success. Their partnership took the side to three figures, and they showed no signs of stopping. Soon, it was worth 50 runs. Knotts were showing the champions how to do it. The pair brought the 150 up for the hosts, as the shadows started to lengthen across the Trent Bridge surface. Mullaney plundered his way to a quick fire 50, another big shot enough to take him there off 57 balls. Bad light saw the day come to an end, both men still at the crease and nearing 200. The score at the close, 188 for 4. 200 was on the board early in the session, the host's lead was now stretching to three figures. Two runs off Snater took James to his half century. His knock came from 90 balls and had really given his side a position of strength. But the bowler would have the last laugh, four balls later he had the knots all rounder out for 51, Harmer quick to get down for the catch. And then he had two in two balls. Moores caught behind for a first ball duck, and the young Essex bowler had his maiden fifer in first class cricket. A moment to savour for Snater. With Mullaney there, Knotts kept streaking away from the champions. The lead headed towards 150, and the all rounder was closing in on a century. Patterson White had Knotts on 250. Could he stick with Mullaney? He'd be out for the same as his shirt number. 22 runs added before he was out to Harmer, who had Tender Scarter to thank for his agile catch. They couldn't prevent Mullaney reaching 100. His 18th four didn't quite go where he intended, but that didn't matter. His knock had his side now closing in on a lead of 200. And he was still there at lunch. The score 296 for 7, and Broad alongside him was even showing some attacking intent. They brought the 300 up after lunch and were showing their intent. Broad batting at a runner ball and showing the kind of late innings hitting he often displays for England nowadays. His partner would fall to Siddle though. The Aussie got one to skid on and beat the bat. Mullaney bowled for 117. Fletcher wouldn't be able to add batting fireworks to his big bowling performance. He was out LBW to Snater for two. And then he had a seventh wicket to his name. Broad caught in the slips by Cook, out for 41 and Knotts all out for 323, their lead 224. Mullaney's innings had been a real highlight for Knotts, some intelligent play mixed with some ballistic hitting had taken him to 100. And no matter the result, the match will live long in the memory of Snater, who finished with 7 for 98. 
Essex got themselves off to a great start. The opening partnership of Nick Brown and Alistair Cook vastly improving on their first inning showings to take the score past 50. But they were only in the 60s when Knotts had their first breakthrough, courtesy of Lyndon James. Cook's paths found, out LBW for 35. Wesley followed in quick succession, caught behind for just one off the bowling of Stuart Broad. And all of a sudden, the start was turned on their head. A regroup required at T, the score 76 for 2. They tried what they could, but Knotts wouldn't be kept out for long. The score 89 when Patterson produced a great delivery to bowl Lawrence for 11. Brown and Walter looked to find their way to three figures, but they had to be careful and batted patiently. That approach got them to 100 and had Brown in the 40s, and he was looking for back-to-back -back half centuries. He wouldn't be denied. Broad dropped into the leg side for a single, and the opener was leading the resistance for Essex. He'd go on to play his way to 60 and take the total to 129 for three, and the day was brought to a close. But importantly, the deficit was now just 93. Could they keep going on the third day of play? After no play possible on day three, that meant Nottinghamshire had to wait to keep pressing on for the win. But they had a big scalp at the resumption on day four. Brown, out, caught behind off Fletcher. Tender Scarter and Walter took the score to 150, the deficit now heading towards 50 runs. But James brought their partnership to an end. Tender Scarter trapped in front and out for 21. Two balls later, Wheata had to go. The space between bat and pad found and off stump crashed into. Harmer could do little better. He was out LBW to Patterson without adding to the total, and Essex were now at risk of an innings defeat to Knotts. James saw the back of the last recognised batsman, Walter, caught by Duckett in the slips, and the hosts now charging towards the winning line. Siddle went the same way, caught in the slips, Patterson the bowler this time. Fletcher finished it. Porter was caught behind, and it was another difficult day for Essex, who look almost certain to be unable to retain their title now.